This is Rob Tabbitt for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, joined again by Boxing Social Boxing. star Dan Raphael. How are you, Dan? I'm doing good. That was a hell of a night. It was indeed. Let's start from the main event. Uh, Tyson Fury successfully comes through Otto Wallin. A bloody, brutal, dramatic 12-round decision. That, that was a fight where both guys had to really bite down and get through some very, very difficult times. It could have been stopped maybe either way, certainly from the cuts on Fury's side. You know, later in the fight, when uh, you know, Fury was pounding on Otto, I thought maybe the referee could have stopped the fight, um, you know, round 10, 9, 10, 11. Uh, but, it, it, you know, that's what boxing fans want to see when they see big guys get in the ring and rumble. They saw a heck of a fight. It's not the kind of fight that Fury usually is involved in, but he really didn't have a choice because he knew how urgent it was with the cut. He had to be aggressive and... You know, he was probably concerned or his corner was concerned that maybe they would stop the fight because the cut, there was really two cuts. They were so bad that, you know, it really, in some places, probably would have been stopped. Uh, but, uh, you know, Fury calls himself a warrior. Here he is. Otto Whalen showed that he is, uh, you know, a guy that can compete on the top level. And, uh, and uh, fans got a hell of a night. You know, I know there wasn't a lot of expectations for the fight, but... When you bring a guy in who, who you don't know what's inside him and he's undefeated and he's, he's, he really seems to have wanted this fight, you know, he didn't shrink it in the moment. He never seemed uncomfortable being around Fury during the build-up to the fight, during the press conferences when they made some TV appearances together. Uh, and, he, and he fought his heart out and it was, it was a great night for boxing, I thought. Obviously, the talk going into this fight was about the Deontay Wilder rematch sometime next year in February. Obviously, neither of us are doctors, but just to speculate, do you think that this could potentially push that back? You know, I don't, I don't know how many stitches uh, Fury is going to need. He, he went to the hospital, which is why he didn't come to the press conference because of the cuts. You know, that'll be something that the, we'll know more about in the next few days. It's, it's hard to say because we need, none of us know the extent of what those injuries were, what kind of uh, repairs it needed as far as uh, uh, stitches, maybe a small surgery, whatever the case may be. Um, but here we are in... You know, late September, uh, you know, it's possible that it could put that off. I, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. It's, uh, that's that's going to be up to the doctors and his team to decide. I spoke to Wayne McCulloch straight after the fight. Wayne McCulloch said to me that he wasn't very impressed with Tyson before the cut. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, I don't know if I... It, it only, there was only two rounds that had gone by. I mean, Otto started off very well, but, you know, Fury's never really been a, a hugely fast starter, so... You know, I don't think it's fair to say I wasn't impressed with him. I mean, you know, that's a typical Fury fight. So, you know, I have no real thoughts about look good, look bad. To me, he was just, you know, it's a 12-round fight. You're just getting into it. He, he might have lost, you know, the first round, possibly even the second round. But that's Tyson Fury. You know, it does take him sometimes a little time to get going. Mexican Independence weekend, uh, big stage in Las Vegas, bloody brutal fight like that. How much will that do for Tyson's profile here in the United States? Oh, that, that, that'll do a lot for him because the highlights will get shown all over the place. You know, that, that there'll be a million still photographs of him with the blood streaming down his face and the huge gash over his head. And, uh, you know, people can go on and watch. The, you know, peop, what, what will happen is there was obviously boxing fans probably tuned in and watched it live. But there's going to be a lot of people that are going to see the highlights or see the photos or read the stories and see, wow, this was really a tremendous fight. And they'll, they'll be able to go on the ESPN Plus service in the United States and, you know, do it on demand and watch the whole thing for themselves. So, you know, I suspect that a lot of people, well, who didn't watch the fight live or maybe didn't really know much about it or weren't really paying attention to it, will see the headlines and, and, and all the talk about it on Twitter was trending. And they'll say, you know, let me check it out. And so there'll be a lot of people that didn't care about the fight or care or know about the fight will see the fight in the aftermath. So, yes, it cannot and do anything but help raise Fury's profile, which is the reason why they stated at the beginning of this deal he made with Top Rank to come to the United States to fight on the ESPN platforms uh, to raise his profile in America. And this, it, this is the kind of fight that will do that. The cut was caused by a punch, meaning that had the fight been stopped, Wallen would have won the fight. Do you believe that the fight would have been stopped had that cut happened to Otto Wallen instead of Tyson Fury? You know, I, I, look, to, uh, Tony Weeks is a top-notch Hall of Fame caliber referee. You know, I think he's a straight guy. You know, he calls it fair. And if he didn't stop the fight when it, with, with a cut like that against Fury, I, I wouldn't ever second-guess and say he would do the same if it was on the other, uh, on the other opponent. But the bottom line was uh, he's an experienced championship-level referee. They have outstanding ringside physicians in Nevada. They did their job by looking at the cut. Neither of us were sitting in the corner looking at the cut, so I don't know how bad it was. It looked bad in terms of the volume of blood, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's you know a certain amount of how deep it is or how long it is. So, you know, you know, in a lot of places, some doctors would have stopped that fight because they get skittish, they get nervous. Uh, they're they are very experienced here in Nevada with a top-notch commission and top-notch medical people, top-notch referees. So I'm not going to second-guess uh, what they did when they went and did their job and looked at it up close. And you and I did not do that. 
What will this performance do for Otto Wallen? Coming into this fight, he was severely underestimated, overlooked going into that potential Wilder rematch. What will this performance do to him, albeit in defeat? Well, Otto Wallen made a career for himself. I mean, he was 20-0 coming into this fight, but those 20 wins mean way less than what this one loss will mean for him in terms of his profile, for his ability to get bigger fights, for his own confidence, because now he knows, you know what, I may not have fought anybody of remote consequence in my first 20 fights, but I just went, you know, not straight up with the lineal heavyweight champion, but I competed with him. I had him in trouble. I, I, I didn't get blown out. I, I was in the fight all the way. I showed heart, he showed heart. He knows now in his heart that if he can compete with the best heavyweights in the world. I mean, I would say at worst, Tyson Fury is at worst the third best heavyweight in the world. Most people would have him, you know, one or two. And he just put in a very uh, credible, competitive effort against him. So uh, he's got one loss to one of the best heavyweights out there. And he'll, it'll make a career for himself. He'll make a lot of money. Uh, and, he, you know, he'll be, he'll be a guy that will be in demand for some other top contenders. He, he put on a good fight. I have nothing bad to say about Ottawa. He showed heart. You know, he was very um, professional in the way he handled the build-up to the fight. You know, was, was terrific with the press, uh, did all his interviews, you know, showed a good personality. Um, and then he went in and fought his heart out. So what's there to complain about? You and I spoke about the potential Wilder Fury 2 uh, for 2020 earlier this week at the press conference. Did anything we saw tonight change your mind with regards to that rematch? For the, the uh, Wilder Fury rematch? I mean, look, it's not really. I mean, this fight is not going to be anything like the Wilder fight, obviously. I mean, they're different, they're different styles. You know, Deontay's a lot taller than Whaling. Deontay's right-handed, not southpaw like uh, Whaling. And, uh, you know, every fight is different. So I don't, I don't think what happened tonight really has a huge bearing on that, with the exception of they want, you got to make sure the cut is good to go because if the cut is slightly still a problem, you know, it could break open at any moment against... Uh, against uh, Deontay. You have to make sure that the cut is 100% healed. Not 95%, not 98%, 99%. You got to make sure it's 100% good to go. And just finally, elsewhere on the card, we saw Emmanuel Navarrete uh, retain his uh, WBO Super Bantamweight title, becoming one of the hardest punches in boxing. Emmanuel Navarrete is an exciting fighter. He's a very good fighter. Uh, he lost the first round, but uh, you know that was maybe a combination of a Lorde, you know, want to get off to a quick start and maybe Navarrete just uh, starting a little slow to see what he had in front of him. But after that first round, it was all... Navarrete, he was rocking him with every shot, and uh, you know he looked really good. And you know he's in a he's in a great position. He's he's won two fights by early knockout uh, in the last couple of months. Uh, you know accepted the opportunity to fight in this card on very short notice because he had just fought four weeks ago. You know was very happy to fight because it's Mexican Independence Day weekend. He was a Mexican top rank wanted to have one of their Mexican champions fight in a, in a fight on this show. And uh, you know a lot of people probably got a chance to see him. He looked really good, and uh, you know on to the next. I mean he he's going to be a force. You know as long as he can make that weight. Okay, well, Dan Raphael, always a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks very much for giving myself and Boxing Social your time. Look forward to catching up with you soon. My pleasure. Appreciate it. And I'll see you down the road. Thanks, mate.